Uh, Shalom Israel, I'd like to say all praises, honor and glory to Yahweh by Hashem Yahweh Shai. Double one to the elders of GMS, and Shalom to Lekman out there, doing this work of faith and labor of love and true sincerity. All right, now, um, you know, I just was watching um, Elder Gabar lesson, you know, his uh, latest mailbag, well, one of his latest mailbags, you know, the Sabbath day is wrong, and, um, you know, I just wanted to play, uh, you know, a, a portion of his video and just, uh, you know, do a little piggy piggybacking. You know, based off a little further information that that I dug up, and um, you know, based off of uh, a, a book in which I have, you know, to, to further edify and show that um, you know, you worshiping the Friday, the Saturday sundown, or the the the, the Sunday, you know, as being a Sabbath is is clearly off, man, and it's clearly paganistic, man. All right, and if you're following either the Friday, the Saturday sundown, or 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 how the churches do, you know, basically honor trying to honor the Sabbath on Sunday, you're going off according to scripture. Okay? And you're doing nothing but sun worship, man. Alright? Alright, so um, you know, I'm just uh play a quick segment of uh you know the elders video, then um pull out this edification. This is a site that I ha I have uh here on screen that I'm gonna read to you a little bit about the Gregorian calendar. The Gregorian calendar is today's intentionally accepted civil calendar and is also known as the Western calendar or Christian calendar. It was named after the man who first introduced it in February 1582, Pope Gregory XIII, which you will find that Pope Gregory's model of the Gregorian calendar was based upon Constantine's model, which Constantine was a sun worshiper. Okay, one of Constantine's slogan was Sol Evicta, the unconquerable sun. So he believed in sun worship. So his model of the calendar was based upon the sun. Right. Not the moon. Right, so, you know, just piggybacking off of the point of how Elder Gabar was saying, you know, that, um, uh, Constantine was a sun worshiper, man, you know, and he worshiped, uh, you know, the, the, the god Saturn as well, the pagan deity Saturn as well, man, all right, and, um, you know, I have this book here, you know what I mean, hopefully you brothers can see it, uh, Claire, it says, this is, uh, the history of the first council of Nice Nice Nicaea, all right, okay, and this book is by, um, you know, uh, uh, Dean Dudley, I don't know if you brothers can see it or not, but hopefully, you know, it comes out clear enough that you can um, see it, you know. Okay, so this is uh, a history of the First Council of Nicaea, a world's Christian convention, A.D. 325, with a life of Constantine, all right? So I just want to, um, you know, read, you know, a couple pointers, you know, from this book, all right, based off of Constantine, okay? All right, and I'm going to jump to, uh, this is uh, page 15, it says, um, Constantine had his likeness represented on golden coins with the eyes lifted, uplifted in the attitude of prayer. And our present legal institution of Sunday was established by this man's authority. So he clearly established the, the, the Sunday, uh, sun, the Sunday uh, Sabbath, all right? It says, he enjoined all on all the subjects of the Roman Empire to observe the Lord's Day as a day of rest. This decree for the general observance of Sunday appears to have been issued A.D. 321, before which time both the Old and New Sabbaths were observed by Christians. Gibbon says he called the Lord's Day Dies Solus, that is, the day of the sun, or sun's day. This day, he said, should be regarded as a special occasion for prayer, okay, and it has a little footnote when when it shows uh, Sunday here, you know, hopefully you brothers can see it, it has a little footnote, you know, it says two by Sunday, and I'm going to go down to here at the bottom to what it says as far as Sunday up here, okay, if you brothers can see it, all right, and it says, um, it was not generally called Sunday before this time, probably never so called, Constantine had claimed Apollo, the sun god, as his patron, and even after becoming a Christian, he stamped Apollo's image on one side of his coin 
and the initials of Christ on the other. Right? So that clearly show you that, you know, he was he was into sun worship, man. All right? And he had to do with uh uh the, the Julian calendar, man. And he was also uh, a, a worship of, of of the uh pagan deities uh Saturn, man. All right? Now I'm going to jump to uh page 22 here. Okay? It says um Dr. Stanley of the Episcopal Church gave some pointed finishing touches to the sketch. While he was at Rome, an inscription was found one day over the gates of the Palatine, catching at his weak points, Oriental luxury and cruelty. All right? And it reads, I'm going to read this. Uh, it's in, um, you know, if your brothers can see it once again. It's uh, in Latin, okay? And this is uh, the words of Constantine. It says, Saturni Aurea Soocla Kis Requiwit. Sunt Hoek Gemma said Nerania, which I translate, the golden times of Saturn who'd restore. Ours, ours shine with gems, but narrow reigns once more. So gold, the word golden just means what, like aged or old in this, in this uh, phrase. So Constantine is basically saying the old times of Saturn, who's going to restore him? He was applying that to himself saying, I'm here to restore the old ways of of the pagan deity Saturn, man, okay? To put that back into full power. He says, our shine with gems, but Nero reigns once more. So he was referring himself to Nero Caesar, man, okay? And we all know what Rome was all about. That Saturnalia worship, man, okay? That Saturnalia worship. So originally what? Constantine was into, you know, a, a Saturn worship, but then during this... Um, uh, uh, during during that 321 AD, you know, he wound up switching over and and and, and putting Saturn's day, Saturnalia's day, to um to Sunday, and calling it the Sun's day or the day of the Sun, worshiping Apollo, man, to show you that he was a clear cut pagan, man, and that if you're worshiping either this Friday to Saturday sundown, you know, you're going off, and if you're uh, celebrating it on or if you're Holding the Sabbath according to Sunday, you're going off, man. Because it's clearly shown throughout the scriptures that it's based off of the moon, man. All right? So, uh, got a, uh, another little article here. All right? Uh, so, um, yeah, from AmazingDiscoveries.org, it says, Why Sunday? All right? It says, Papal authority in the Sabbath chains. In the Ten Commandments, the Sabbath commandment emphasizes the authority of the lawgiver, the Most High. A change in the Sabbath means a change in authority. So if you change the Sabbath from what the Most High originally ordained it, you're giving authority what to another deity, all right? To another pagan false god, all right? To a, to a pagan false god, I'm sorry. It's locked it. all right? It says, when we choose another Sabbath, we give the authority to another entity. What, uh, Nimrod, Tammuz, you know what I'm saying? All, all these pagan gods are, are, are different names. In forms of Nimrod and Tammuz, all right, it says the Mosai is no longer the authority, rather the substitute, the counterfeit. Counterfeit means what? Fake, okay? The counterfeit grasps this position. Another power on earth, another god on earth, has attempted to replace the true god, all right? And, and that's exactly what it is, man. So you're replacing the Mosai with these pagan, um, um, um. Pagan uh, deities, man, all right? Just going on here, it says what? Sunday, so-called, because this day was anciently dedicated to the sun or to its worship. Sunday, so-called, because it was dedicated to the worship of the sun. Sunday, dies solus, of the Roman calendar, day of the sun, being dedicated to the sun, the first day of the week, you know, so-called. Then here you got what? The days of the week, okay? Names in the origin. Sunday, sun's day, Monday, the moon's day, Tuesday, the day of the Norse god Tyr, Wednesday, the day of Anglo-Saxon god Woden, Thursday, the day of the early Germanic god Thor, Friday, the day of Woden's wife Frigg, Saturday, Saturn's day. So that clearly show you that what? If you're into the Friday to Saturday uh, uh, Sabbath, so-called Sabbath, then you're into Saturn, Saturn's day worship, man. Or if you're holding it according to the churches on Sunday, then you're into sun worship, man. All right? Okay, now let me get, um, <clears throat> what's this other point that I wanted to grab here, all right? Yeah, this is, uh, uh, walk in the light, 
the dot ca or whatever okay just wanted to hit a couple quick points here it says um yeah the seven day week the fixed seven day week was not widely used until it was introduced into the julian calendar in the fourth century ce by the emperor constantine so they wasn't even in ancient times you know before this we wasn't holding no weeks and things of that nature we were just going strictly off of the moon and how they see in the scriptures it'd be the first day of the 14th or it'd be like the seventh day of the, or the fifth month so on and so forth there was no days of the week or nothing like that so friday to saturday down is off man all right okay it says um yeah through ancient through accidents of history the gregorian calendar has come to be used worldwide as a standard civil calendar for government and business affairs no improvement has been made in this calendar since it was decreed by Pope Gregory in 1582. All right. So jumping down here, it says um, the lunar year. Most calendars are based on the solar year in which they uh, in Babylon they worship here, the solar year. All right. Solar years have the disadvantage of not being easily observable. So it's not easy to follow the times according to the sun. All right. Many years of observations are required to fix them with any significant degree of accuracy. On the other hand, the phases of the moon and the first visibility after the new moon in particular are very easy and quick to observe, man. So that clearly shows you that if you're having difficulty basing times off of the sun, you know, that's why the, the Julian calendar was so messed up and that's why the Gregorian calendar is so messed up, man. Okay? Because it's much easier and it's much more plain because that's the natural way that the most I ordained it for the times to go off of the moon, all right? The days that go off of the moon. Therefore, the first calendars defined a lunar year. It said the first calendars defined a lunar year, usually consisting of 12 synodic months. A synodic month is the interval from one new moon to the next and last is approximately 29.5 days, 29 and a half days. This is equivalent to 29 days, 12 hours, 44 minutes, and 2.9 seconds. All right? All right, let's get into some other shit right there. But um, what's the other point? Yeah, the Hebrew calendar. All right? The year is divided into 12 lunar months. This is the Hebrew calendar, right? The calendar that we followed in ancient times in which we still go by. Well, the righteous men and the Lord still go by today, all right? To the best of our ability. The year is divided into 12 lunar months which each start when the new moon is first visible. This gives a total of approximately 354 days, all right? So this is self-explanatory. So let's do some basic math out there. You're going to call this mathematics for dummies, all right? This is some basic math, all right? 354 divided by 29. Point five, 29 and a half days, all right? Which equals clearly what? 12, man. That's 12 months. That clearly shows you, man. Okay? But how can you calculate the calendar accurately based off of the sun? You can't do it, man. You can't do it. All right? You can't do it, man. Okay? So, we're going to get a couple extra points, you know, and show you how the Catholic Church is off, man. And, and um, you know, okay, this is a quick article, uh, Roman Catholic Confessions about Saturday and Sunday. All right, so this article pretty much bases things off of things being from the Friday to Saturday sundown, which are clearly off, and showing you that the church felt as though they had to write to change it to Sunday. All right, so um, it says, whose day is of worship is Sunday? All right, and this is just to prove a point. Okay, it says, they, the Protestants, deem it their duty to keep the sun Sunday holy. Why? Because the Catholic Church tells them to do so they have no other reason the observance of sunday thus comes to be an ecclesiastical law entirely distinct from the divine law of the sabbath observance the authority of the sunday law is the catholic church and this is from the ecclesiastical review february 1914 okay our right, next point it says the sunday whether it's saturday to sunday it doesn't matter it's all paganistic man all right it's all paganistic all right but it's just to prove a point of how the church feels as though they have the authority to do what the hell they want to do over the laws of the Mosai. All right, Yahweh Bashmi Yahweh Shai. Okay, it says the Sunday 
is purely a creation, meaning they made it up, of the Catholic Church. This is the American Catholic Quarterly Review. Okay, this is from them themselves, January 1883. Okay, next point. Sunday is the law of the Catholic Church alone. American Centennial Catholic, June 1893. Okay, these are all official uh, pointers in, in records, all right? Sunday is a Catholic institution, and its claim to observance can be defended only on Catholic principles. From beginning to the end of Scripture, there is not a single passage that warrants the transfer of the weekly public worship from the last day of the week to the first, all right? That's from the Catholic Press in Sydney, Australia, August 1900, all right? Um, let's see here. Uh, yeah, it's another point. Hit like two more points. And, um, okay, this is, uh, yeah, who are we reverencing, bowing, and paying homage to by keeping Sunday holy? Well, like I said, whether it's Saturday or Sunday, it's all pagan, man. All right? The authority of the church could therefore not be bound to the authority of the scriptures. Because the church has cha had changed. So they're saying that the church has basically a higher authority over the scriptures, man. Because the church had changed, or so-called. The Sabbath into Sunday, not by command of Yahweh Shai, but by his own authority. Canon and Tradition, page 263. Alright? Okay, there's one more point here. It says, um, Sunday is our mark of authority. The church is above the Bible and this transference of Sabbath observance is proof of that fact. Catholic Record of London, Ontario, September 1st, 1923, man. So that, that just goes to show you, man, whether it's Friday to Saturday or it's Sunday, however you want to put it, man, it's paganistic, man. It's off according to Scripture, man, all right? I'm just grab one precept and try to wrap this up, all right? It says, it's uh, 1 Samuel 20 and 5, and David said unto Jonathan, Behold, tomorrow is the new moon, and I should not fail to sit with the king at meat. But let me go, that I may hide myself in the field until the third day at even. All right? So let's just look at this word new moon here, okay? Okay, the word is uh, chadash, all right? And it says, what well, clearly, I mean, self explanatory, the new moon, month, because the word. Month comes from the word moon. The new moon, month, monthly. The first day of the month, the lunar month, man. Okay? So that's self-explanatory, man. That's self-explanatory, man. All right? Like how you read in the other article, it clearly stated that the first calendars were of the, the lunar calendar, man. All right? So, you know, I just wanted to touch on, you know what I mean, just piggybacking off, you know, Elder Gabar and just do a little extra piece on it, you know what I mean, hopefully... This is further edification for you brothers out there, all right? So, you know what I mean? With that, I'd like to say all praises, honor, and glory to Yahweh Bashmi Abashai. Double one is to the elders of GMS. Shalom to the out there doing this work of faith and labor of love and truth and sincerity. Shalom, death to America.